I just want to let everybody know who's struggling or going through hard times right now that that's going to make you stronger. It's going to make you a better person. You might ask, how's my struggling going to make me a better person? Well, the struggle is to prepare you for the future or to show you something that you're not doing. There's a lot of beauty in the struggle. A bunch of people procrastinate because of it and evade their own greatness simply because they're in the wrong place at the wrong time or they place themselves around people who pump negativity in their head on top of all the negativity that they already soaked in growing up. Prime example, most people in my neighborhood were ballers, gangbangers, pimps, and show-offs. That's what I was around growing up. That's what I saw. So that's what I soaked in. How are you going to do good when there's no good around you? That's a good question. Growing up, I was dealt a bad hand. Born to a teenage drug addict in a housing project in Watts, I never knew my father. I was abused in foster care where I spent my childhood. I dropped out of high school, ran with hoodlums, and built a long rap sheet that began with an arrest for burglary at the age of 14. When I was 15, I was walking home from the park late night, and a car pulled up on me with someone hanging out the sunroof, and they started shooting. Boom! Boom! I heard two shots. Boom! Then I heard another shot. Then I felt a piercing pain in my arm and noticed that I felt a prison pain in my arm, so then as quick as I could, I turned around and went the other way. They busted a U-turn and hit the gas. Boom! Then I felt another shot, and I noticed that my side was wet, and the car was getting closer. So I stopped and proceeded across the street in the opposite direction. They busted another U-turn and hit the gas. Boom! Then I felt a sharp pain go across my leg. I looked through my peripheral, I looked to my right and through my peripheral, I saw him lock onto me as if he was going to take his last shot. I stopped and made a sharp left behind the driver's car. When I stopped, the car made an immediate stop, and the shooter rocked to the side, and that gave me enough time to make it across the street and hop a wall. Boom! Another shot was fired. The bullet hit the wall. Pieces of concrete hit my face and got into my eye. I laid there a while and waited for them to smash off. My life literally flashed in front of my eyes. The bullet passed right by my head. But I learned a lot from it, enough to make me seek out guidance from counselors, mentors, my probation officer, and a college professor who actually cared about me because I was like a yo-yo the whole time they were working with me, straddling the fence, in and out of detention centers for petty crimes. But they stuck with me even when I pushed them away. I started to see that they really cared about me, I thought they just wanted to use me for their program, but they wanted to see me be somebody successful and not a product of my environment. They put me around successful black people that grew up with challenges so that I can see it was possible. They took me places out the hood so I can see the world and that it was a bigger picture to it. I grew up in a massive culture of dysfunction, and all I knew was the streets. I didn't even know what I wanted to be in life like a lot of youth out here committing crimes. I was on the verge of life in prison or chaos on the streets. But that group of people spent a lot of time working with me on my beliefs and my behaviors, and they helped show me my self-worth. So I then became a role model for up from the street success. Changing my ways was one of the hardest things I think I ever had to do. I almost lost my life doing it. I had to change my friends, where I hung out, and most importantly, my ways. This was so hard because my so-called friends and homies from the hood turned on me because they thought I turned on them. It got to the point where I was getting into a fight or altercation just to get to the program or a meeting. They thought I turned on them because I stopped hanging out and going to hood functions and started to go to school board and legislative meetings. After I began to change my ways, I met up with the U.S. Attorney General and I even got a chance to meet President Obama and many others like Congress members and school board members and plenty of celebrities and athletes. I got completely into youth advocacy and community organizing and became a violence prevention counselor. I worked with a lot of groups and organizations getting certain bills and propositions passed, such as Prop 47, the Reduced Penalties for Some Crimes Initiative. 
as well as school discipline policies and the School Common Bill of Rights, which discourages suspension as a punishment, which means that cuts down on the school to prison pipeline, and it also means fewer kids out of school and fewer incarcerations. Shortly after those successes, I moved with my biological mother, who I found on Facebook in another crazy area, because I got a job at a Buffalo Wild Wings that one of my mentors owned. I had to go through five major hoods to get to work. I had to get on, catch a bus to the train station and from the train, another bus. If the bus didn't come on time, the walk to the train or from the train home was the worst because I had to deal with the fact that I was affiliated in an area where they don't like blacks or people that was from the area where I was from. One day, on the way to work, I made it to the train station. When I got on the train and made it to my stop, I heard a gunshot. And when I got off the train, I heard that somebody had just got shot on the next cart over, the cart that I was actually supposed to get on. So when I went home, I called my mentor and I told him what was going on. And then about a week later, I got a call saying, do you want to get out the situation you're in? I told him, yes. I'm tired of coming home from long days at work, sleeping on the floor, waking up to roaches in my face. And he said, well, pack your bags and come outside. I had about $1,500 saved up. On the car right there, he uplifted me like no other and explained to me that I was a diamond in the rough. Under the mentorship of Dr. Rinford Reese, I enrolled at Mount San Antonio College and took classes at Cal Poly Pomona University. He exposed me to dynamics of college campus life, and he got me out of that culture of dysfunction I was talking about so that I can breathe. Once I was able to breathe, I began to think. Once I began to think, I started to exhale. He took me under his wing and created a roadmap to academic success. He paid our rent for four months, and he kept us busy. In October 2015, five Roberson scholars and I were invited to Savannah, Georgia, from Los Angeles, California, to tell our stories at a community safety forum hosted by the Chatham County Juvenile Court. Local judges, law enforcement, school board members, and elected officials were blown away by the ideas and plans for concrete change. Later that evening, while touring River Street, one of the scholars and I met some local kids who were supposed to be attending the forum exactly the kind who I hope to reach with our message. And we followed them while having a conversation. They pulled out a gun and tried to kill us because we had nothing they could steal. My friend and I ran. I took two bullets to the arm and one in the back, which ripped into the vertebrae behind my heart. The prognosis was that I would never walk again. I stayed at Memorial Hospital for about a month and a half. Then I moved to the Shepherd Spinal Center in Atlanta, where they helped me develop my emotional and physical stamina and independence. I learned a lot from the peoples and stories there. After rehab, I decided to come back to Savannah to enlighten and empower at-risk youth who have faced challenges that I have faced. A quote by Martin Luther King, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. I stayed here in Savannah because I care about what's going on. I didn't want to run from the problem, I wanted to run to it. And by being proactive, I can help change lives and solve some problems by sharing my own experiences and education with people who, are in current, who, people who are in currently, who are currently in situations that I escaped from. I'm challenging everybody who's struggling, going through a hard time or a negative time in their life to look at the situation in a different way. Reach out for help. Get yourself educated on what's going on and why. You might find out that it's just a temporary, a temporary phase or bump in the road, or maybe you're living in a system or area that's built for you to fail. Whatever it is, you need to find out so you can move forward with your life. I'm going to end with this quote from Martin Luther King. The functions of education is to, is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, those are the goals of true education. 
And I have learned through my own journey that education is liberation. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.